Well, it says we're live. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever you are. All the best, sending your way all the time. It's Biz to Biz with Joy. Grow your business and style. Where we meet with leaders who are leaving legacies. And the legacy that we're going to be talking about today is health. It begins today. And we're going to be talking about health and herbs and owls. And we're going to blend them all together. And the guest that I have tonight, Gina Kearney, she is a specialist. She is an expert. She's an influencer because she knows all about herbs and the essence of flowers and all of that stuff. I am Joy Ruffin. I am your style and leadership coach. I work with women who are in their second act, second chapter, midlife, and I'm talking regardless of age. Doesn't have to be second chapter, second act. It can be anyone who's in any type of transition who wants to amp up their wow factor. And we talk about that a wee bit later. I have a master nine, a class that's coming up June the 24th, which I'll share with you a little bit later. But now I want you to meet our guest, Gina. Gina Kearney is a her herb and owl specialist. At least that's the name of her shop. And we're going to find out a lot more about her. So Gina, come up. Gina Kearney, hello and welcome. It's so good to have you here. I it's love what so you're nice doing. To be here. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here because the work that you're doing is wonderful. We all need it. Health is precious and we know how vital it is now more so than ever before. And I fouled up your title and what you do, but in point of fact, you are a herbalist pro. You're an expert. <laughs> now, let's talk about how you came to do the work that you're doing now. That's what we wanna hear. And then we're gonna go into a lot of other things. But how did you get into this? Herbs and the flower essence is pretty much what you do. So tell us a little bit about it. That's right. So I am a clinical herbalist and flower essence practitioner. And in my early 20s, um, I was suffering with panic and anxiety and just sort of like navigating these feelings uh, that I was having. And I came to herbs. I started learning about different flowers and roots and barks that could help me. And that sort of started my passion for herbal medicine. And it wasn't until um, I lost my mother to cancer that I really decided to take it seriously and go back to school to become a clinical herbalist. And since then, I've been doing what I love. I get to educate my clients. I teach um, all about the benefits of herbal medicine and ways that we can incorporate nature-based practices into our lives. And that's what brought me here today to be with you. I'm happy that you're here with me. You know why? Because I've always been a health enthusiast in my small way. And I've always known not knowing that nature and all that it has for us supports us in our healthy lifestyle, which is what we ought to ought to all be about. Sometimes we're not, it takes a while. But what you mentioned, Gina, is priceless. And I applaud you for your honesty, because to say that you had panic attacks and anxiety and all that other stuff, and so you got into herbs early in life, that's very powerful because that's what people need to hear. It helped you to get to where you are, which is very outspoken and clear with clarity and what you have to share, and then the loss of your mother. But that seed that gave you the insight to start this journey, where did you start and how did you start? Share that with us. Yeah, so I first started learning and uh, reading through books and finding everything that I could. Um, I found a doctor who would support me in the in the you know things that I wanted to do and not being on medication. And you know, I learned everything. Honestly, it was really through books and a distance learning program to begin with because herbal medicine schools really didn't exist. I'm from New York, um, and there were no schools that were open. And then. Um, the Arborvitae School of Traditional Herbalism opened up in New York City, and I was so happy. I enrolled right away. I was the second um, graduating class in that school, and I had the opportunity to learn from herbalists from all over the world, all over you know New York, from you know community herbalists to heart surgeons who were using herbs in their practices to specialists, um, and really understand how people were using plants to help others. How exciting. What year I missed that? What year did this come about? Because it is still rather new and yet so timely. So yeah. right now for everything. What year did all of this learning and meeting these experts and specialists come about? What year was that in New York City? <gasps> 
So, yeah, so in my life, it was 17 years ago when I started. However, I went to school um, nine years ago. I started my school career um, in working with plants. That is fantastic. And you know, you're, you're absolutely right that even now, it's not new at all, but yet for a lot of people, and that's why I love having people like you come and share their story, because we now know all of us that health is everything. And all of us have stuff that we have to deal with. And so learning a lot about nature, because let's face it, it all stems from that. So tell us about the flower essence. By the way, before we go there though, how did you come up with the name? Oh yeah, so um, for me it was herbs, which is what we're working with, and owls, I always had a vision. So herbs and owls for me was a vision of not only bringing herbs uh, to help people with various things that they were dealing with, but also teaching, and I envisioned that wise owl. So it's herbs and teaching, and that's exactly what herbs and owls is. <laughs> I love that. You know why? Because I've always been a health enthusiast. I'm, I've am i always, as far back as I can remember, been into herbs and vitamins and all of that, even when I didn't know what they were about, but I knew it had something to do. And I've always had this fascination with owls for <laughs> their wisdom. And they're not, and I'm, I've always been a night owl and I still am. So your name appealed to me in a great way. And you used the right word. Owls, owls have wisdom. So that's a good point. Now, where are you located? I know we're global, we're everywhere, but you're located where? Yes, yeah, so our uh, Herbs and Owls is in Jupiter, Florida. However, I meet with clients both in person and on Zoom. And I also teach in person and on Zoom. And we have a full herb shop where we offer over 150 medicinal herbs and flowers that we sell here in person, but also online. So even though we're in Jupiter, we are everywhere. Tell us, how does the flower essence, how does that support and help? How do you share and explain and educate people about this when you're teaching them about herbs and the flower essence and how they can support their health journey? How do you go about that? Tell us a little bit more about that because even as a novice knowing a little bit, people want to know more. So share with us some of your stories about herbs and the flower essence and how they support good health. Absolutely. So when someone chooses to work with a clinical herbalist like myself and many others, um, often the first uh, appointment is 90 minutes. And we talk about all sorts of things, not only physical health, but emotional health, energetic health, etc. And coming out of that, um, I will make recommendations either, you know, immediately during the consult, and then I usually follow up with written recommendations. But we look at herbs to support the body, but we also look at the energetic. So flower essences, which are my most favorite form of herbal medicine. Ah. Yeah, they, they're the vibrational healing remedies made from living flowers, and they help to move and shift our energetic body. So we may be doing a lot of work on the physical body, but it's not until we start shifting and moving our energetic body and our emotional body that we have a full scope of health and healing. You know, and we're, we're multidimensional beings, and we, have, we address all aspects in plant medicine. Gina. I'm loving this already. You know, I'm a perennial student. I have not heard ever it expressed in that way that the flower essence has the propensity to shift and move your energy and your whatever. You have yes. to share a little bit more about that. I don't think, I never assume anything for anyone, but I bet a lot of people are not aware of that. Are they, and this is not a good question, but I ask all kinds of questions. Are they more potent than herbs or just vastly different? Sure. Yeah, they're vastly different. So a lot of people think that they are essential oils and they are yeah. certainly not essential oils. They're the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, flower essences are water infusions. So they're made by the living flowers being placed on water. And those vibrational healing properties of the living flower are infused into the water. So they were discovered in the 1930s by Dr. Bach, who is a homeopathic doctor, and they are a vibrational um, healing, you know, remedy, which uh, is along the lines of homeopathy. So it's very subtle, um, but very shifting and moving. And in my experience, um, when people begin to work with flower essences, the things that no longer serve them fall away. And what they're left with is this beautiful, you know, bloom that's ready to, to come out and change lives. 
This is powerful. This is very, very powerful. I have to tell you, I had a layman's understanding of this, but what you're talking about, Gina, is really a very powerful transformation that can happen when you really get into the core essence of what these flower essence can do for you. <gasps> Share with us some example or a person or something that someone has gone through, whatever it might be without giving any details and how that shifted their awareness into another zone. Right. So, so many times when we begin our work and when I, you know, I begin working with clients, a lot yes. has to do with holding your own personal boundaries. Um, oftentimes people are wired and tired. They're saying yes to things and they should be saying no, and they really don't hold their own space. And right. that's for various reasons that, you know, that, that, that those habits or the, that action has developed. So Centauri is a flower essence that I work with all the time, and it's for helping people to establish their personal boundaries and pull in that space because when we're able to kind of envision our own personal boundaries that is outside of our body we have the space in between our body and those boundaries to breathe and renew and relax and realize and really be discerning about what it is we let in and what we choose not to let in so that what is promoting health and what is hurting our health wow I, I, I'm a little bit blown away here and that rarely happens with me. Let me ask you this. Is this one of the main reasons that people come and that you're able to support and guide them in this area of personal boundaries? Would that be one of the main top five or 10 areas that you work with people in? When yeah, it comes so yeah. yeah, I think that one of the main reasons people come is that, you know, they're looking for trusted herbal advice. So, you know, um, I, clinical herbalists who are working with clients have an advanced education. You know, I've studied quite a bit. So they're looking for advice. They're looking to learn like, and even relearn because herbal medicine is the medicine of the people, right? This is what our ancestors have done. Our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our aunts, our uncles. And so they want to remember and they want things in their home that can help support them. They want to take charge of their health and know, you know, if I have an excess stomach, if I'm not feeling well, what are the herbs and teas that I can make? To, su to support me. But as we go deeper and we start looking at, okay, there's some physical disharmony that's going on, which could be the reason that clients walk in, we start going deeper and saying, okay, well, why is that manifesting? And what do we need to move and shift so that you can really bloom and blossom into who you are becoming? I like that. I like that move and blossom into who you are becoming. <laughs> and I also am hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, I have no fear of being wrong. I don't have to be right. But people who come to you, they come to you because they are in touch and aware of how much they need the old school blended with the new. It's a matter of blending the old, the nature, what was back then and worked and what's new here and blending them together. So what are some of the, uh, we've already spoken, spoke to personal boundaries, but what are some of the other maybe ailments that come to you? And when they do, Gina, how do you align what you do for and with them with medical doctors? Or the question should be, do you? Yeah, so often uh, clients are coming for stress, they're coming for anxiety, for sleep issues, for, you know, problems with their gut, um, you know, different various things. Uh, and, and I meet with men and women, you know, um, and, and really it's just this disharmony where they feel either that they're um, not getting their support from the doctor or they have a wonderful doctor, but they want more natural solutions. And so most of my clients, you know, they have, they work with their doctor doctors as well. It is, um, so herbalists do not prescribe, treat, cure, or diagnose. We share information about the plants with people, um, and they make their own decisions on what they want to do. It's very yeah. much, yeah, it's very much, they have an active role in their health, which is very different than uh, some other paradigms. Oh, I love that. I love that because you see, here's my belief and you can say, I don't know, but I think deep, deep, deep down inside, the more we get into the inner core of who we are, we have those answers. We just need accountability and confirmation from someone else who maybe has more knowledge than we do about whatever it might be. Tell us when it comes to flowers, I'm going to jockey back and forth. What are some of the flowers named for us? Because people like to know these type of things. This I know. What are some of the flowers that you are working with that do what? 
That's what people <laughs> yeah. Give us a few. yeah, so there's many, um, many people have seen the Bach essences around. Um, Rescue Remedy is one yeah. that many people know that I work with. It's in heightened and acute situations of trauma or, you know, stress where you can work with Rescue Remedy to help. Um, I love um motherwort it's about softening around the edges and soothing i do a lot of work with tree flower essences so the buds of trees and helping us to ground and really you know finds our place in the world um and you know we you you can go and work with simples but i often blend so we're looking at the energetic qualities and where we're going and oftentimes um, i'm blending various flower essences together for my clients now that's another topic that can get to be, I'm sure, kind of heady. And that would be blending, knowing that's why you went to school and got all of this fantastic information. But that blending of different herbs and different uh, flower essences, that's what gives you the ability to give the right portion to whatever and whoever needs it, right? Yeah, and you know, it's we are, you know, human beings upon, yes. among, on this beautiful planet. We are not apart from nature. We are very much a part of it. And if you are even outside smelling the flowers, spending time with them, taking a flower, putting it in your water, you're getting those benefits. You know, it's when we're working with being very specific and intentional. I like to set goals with clients and intention yes. like this is what we're moving towards. This is what we're we're working with. Um, so we're clear on our path together. And, you know, the more they work with it, the more they become in tune with the natural world around them. I have clients who, you know, never heard of flower essences. Many people haven't. And they'll start noticing as they're moving through their life, the flowers and the trees and the nature that's all around them and really connecting with it on a whole nother level. Ah, Gina. Now that was another question that I had for you. And now is the time. And then I'm going to take a quick break and put you in the green room, but I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. But here's a question. I think you answered it, but be a little bit more specific when I come back, not right now, the type of people. And when I say the type of people, I don't mean their descriptions, but I mean, are they more progressive in their thinking? Are they more old school? Do you have a mixture of the young, the middle and the aged? What, or do you have a conglomerate of everything, a meddling pot of everyone? That's what I want you to think about and answer when I come back. Hold tight. I'll be back with you in just a second. I find this exciting and stimulating. Stay tuned. <laughs> Don't you love it? You have to because health is important. I tell you, if this pandemic has given us nothing else, it's given us that, that we have to take care of our health. Here's what I'd like for you to do. I'm going to give you two things. I'm told to do just one, but no, that's not me. Please join my Facebook group, Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies, where you'll be notified of everything that we do. And it's a lot of stuff that we have in the hopper. But more importantly, I have a mastermind, a free mastermind that's coming up on June the 24th at 4.30. That's a Thursday. And you're going to be invited. You'll get a link. And then I want to share with you all the things that's about stepping into your leadership, all the things that Gina is talking about, being your best self, being your healthiest that you can be and showing up, being your best leadership type style persona that you want to offer others. That's going to be on June the 24th at 4.30, which is the Thursday. And then if you're here now and you're coming for now or the replay, Type, I'm having a tr real trouble with my words today. I don't know what where the moon or the stars or the Venus is, but it's okay. Type in biz, B-I-Z, in the comments, and you'll be delivered a free booklet, which will give you lots of tips and tools and nuggets about how to be your best in an interview or interviewing. And it's really filled with lots of good nuggets for you to take advantage of. And the other thing is, even though I'm sharing it across here, I want you to make sure that you align with Gina online or in person if you're here in Florida, but we're global, we're all over because her work and what she does, and you can tell that she is an expert at it, that she's a specialist, that she's a professional because she has clarity in what she's explaining to all of us who might be more layman and knowing it, but value we have for it. So make sure that you connect with her and I'll be putting across all of the information about what she does and how she does that. So whatever you do, stay tuned. Now I'm going to bring Gina back up and Gina, I'm going to ask you what my last ending question was the type 
of people who come to you. I bet you're going to say it's a melting pot of a little bit of everybody, but share. Well, yes and no. I mean, predominantly, I find that my clients are women. Um, they are either struggling with some health challenges or they are wanting to stay healthy as they're getting older. Um, they want to you know, bring more natural things into their lives. They wanna understand how they can stay healthy, maintain their health, but also restore. I also see a lot of people who are in transition. And so they're changing from maybe they're retiring or they're, they're having babies. You know, They're at points in their lives where things are shifting and moving and they wanna just feel better, you know, feel health, healthier, work with, you know, understand what plants and things they're bringing into their life, understand what foods they're eating and how that's helping them because food is one of our greatest, you know, sources of medicine. Ah, I like what you said. And I'm not surprised that you said predominantly it's women because I think women are, what's the right verbiage here, are more open to looking into possibilities that might be for the male persona a little bit maybe far-fetched and even though it's no longer new herbs and flower essence it's still somewhat so for a lot of men not all that doesn't apply a lot for anyone I, so I, do. I have more men you know who are coming in which is one yes. and it's the same they have you know it's the same kinds of challenges it's managing that stress understanding their place in the world you know how they feel are they living their lives the way they want to be it's the same things that women struggle with and so <laughs> as we spread the education i'm seeing both men and women I like that. I like that dynamic because, you know, Gina, for me and for you, and I don't have to ask because I know, meaning it's time for women. I never was a, a big proponent of the women's movement for this reason. I didn't want to be compared to a guy and equal the way he was because I always knew I was equal. And now it's our time for women to stand in your greatness and your essence of who you are, knowing that you are equal and you don't have to have that male masculine persona to be yourself. So I get that. When it comes to herbs again, herbs, I love the name herbs and owls. What you mentioned foods, how does foods play into the herbs that you're using? Give us some information, whatever you want to share about how they align with herbs, the foods and how you use them. That would right. be so one category is culinary herbs, you know, making yes. sure that you're using cilantro and parsley and basil and tarragon and all of these wonderful herbs have healing benefits. They're also foods. I work with fennel quite a bit. A lot of people have, you know, after they eat, they have gas and bloating and indigestion. And you can use fennel seeds from your pantry. You can have fresh fennel that you're eating afterwards. But that is an amazing, amazing digestive. So, you know, not only when you're working with an herb, do you get herbal recommendations for teas and tinctures and various things, but there's also a big chunk is food components and making sure that you're getting enough phytonutrients, which is the constituents in fruits and vegetables that make our body strong, that help us to heal and let our body do all of the things that it does by itself. Our bodies know how to be healthy. They know how to heal. What we need to do is give it the proper food and herbs and let it do, let it do its thing. Uh. You could not have said that better. Those of us who are somewhat in the light, and the key is somewhat, we know this. We know that this body, this temple, this paradise of wonder is meant to be cared for and to be adorned in every way, the best way. And that's what you're doing. I really just celebrate the work that you're doing because I'm just getting to know more and more about herbs and flower essence. And flower essence is still somewhat newer, I think, tell me, than herbs, right? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we have been using, you know, herbs as food and food as medicine for as long as we've been humans and animals. I mean, as long as we're on this planet, that has been our primary source. And the foods that are grown on the earth, which includes herbs, right? I mean, our they're the same, one and the same. It's things that we ingest through our digestive system. That's what makes healthy bones and blood and organs and skin and tissue. And so, yeah, that's what we need. No question about it. The timing now, you see, I, I'm very karmic and so are you. I don't ask because I know. Because the timing now is so ripe for the business that you're doing. Right and ripe. Because more and more people are beginning to realize how valuable 
and major taking care of this body, this temple is. So the work that you're doing is, is really stupendous, a word that I use a lot when it fits, and it fits here. And again, I'm going back. I heard what you shared with us about your anxiety and panic, stress, and so on, and your mother losing her at an early age, and yet going to find out how you could find a way to soften some of the stuff that you were dealing with. When did it become paramount that you wanted to do this, that you needed to do this? This was your calling. This was your mission. Was that was that at a certain moment or time? Tell us a little bit about that. Because I think what you're doing, having a business like this, starting a business like this, I think that's an agent of change. That's a female trailblazer. So give us a little bit more about what got you going. Yeah. So I, you know, I started my career completely differently. I was in dot com. I owned an online yes. marketing agency for 10 years. I loved, loved, loved the work that I was doing. But the more that I started working with the plants and the more I started learning, learning is endless. You know, you can study the natural world for the rest of your life and never, never know everything. And that was what, you know, I got to a point where I just said, you know what, I just want to be in the dirt with the plants. Like, uh, this is what I want to teach. This is how I want to help. Um, and this is how I feel I can help people the most. Uh, and so I just jumped right in. I left my company, my partner took over and I started Herbs and Owls. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. And I say this in love, please don't take offense, but you say that in such almost a cavalier way. You had no fear, you had no doubt. You didn't even, you just knew oh, that's beyond. That yeah, is so so in, my, in my second year, uh, so I went to a three year clinical program. And in my second year, uh, I made that phone call to my business partner and I said, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I, I have to do this. <laughs> and the plans took over my life. And honestly, I haven't looked back since. I kind of, I moved to Florida four years ago and I knew very clearly that coming here, my, my dream and my goal was to launch Herbs and Owls and have a place where people could come in. They could learn about, you know, all of the benefits that these plants have for us, that they can learn to make teas, that they have options. It's like, they don't need to ask people, you know, how do I care for myself? They can learn how to do it themselves. And, um, you know, four year, three and a half years later, here we are. And so, you know, I teach, I work, it's, it, the herb shop is wonderful. People ask questions all the time and I love sharing everything that I can. Ah, uh, Gina, you know what? <laughs> All the time you're sharing that with us, I'm just blown away here in the best way. Here's what a friend said to me not too long ago, and this is what I'm hearing from you. She said, oftentimes what you think you want to do or what you're doing, you think that's your calling, your mission, your purpose. But when that mission, calling, and purpose really shows up, you just take off. And that's exactly what you did. You did it in a good way. You studied while you were working, you went to school and so on. But then when the time came, you were ready to fly. You were ready to get those wings up and soaring. So I say bravo to you. Good for you. The work that you're doing is just so needed and, and men and women all over the world. I'm sure the more you get out and become more global and international, you have your website, which I'm putting up here. And there's just so much that we all need from you because here's the beauty of what I know. We all need each other. And be, even though I'm a health enthusiast, it means nothing. I can learn so much from you. I can gather so much from you. The leadership that you're offering to those who need your services, I say good for you. Now. That said, the time here flies, it goes just like that. But I have one more question before you go. And I almost know the answer, but I always ask because I don't want the typical. What, you might've given it to us, but I'm not going to assume. What lights you up? What gives you the air under your wings to soar more than anything else in the work that you're doing right here and now? Oh, I think, Honestly, what lifts me up is when there is that realization and that direct revelation of working when I see my clients growing and changing. And when I see subtle things that they're doing in, you know, working with the plants, just making major life changes and they're happier and healthier. And that it so brings me in every single day. I love it. <laughs> uh, I see. I see. I get it. Listen, the time flies here. I want you to leave us with What's going to impact us most? What are some pearls of wisdom, some 
gems, whatever you want to share with us as you say so long for now. And thank you for sharing this time and space with us because we all need you. We need your knowledge. We need your wisdom. We need your love because we all want to maintain this body in the best way. And that's what you're offering us. So what words of wisdom do you want to share with us? I put up a link I think that you want to speak to. Yeah. So words of wisdom, you know, the, the plants that you need to heal and to get aligned with and to connect with nature are right outside your door. Go mm. learn plant, talk to an herbalist, walk outside, smile at a flower, stop and smell the roses. <laughs> um, my website is up at herbsandowls.com. And if you go there, um, I have a free ebook that you could download. It's called a little ebook of herbal home remedies. And I'll introduce you to three wonderful plants um, that you can get to know and work with. And so that's really it. You know, we live, this earth is a beautiful garden. We are part of it. Get to know the plants around you and my Gina, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. You couldn't end on a better note, offering us this booklet, which will give us much more information. You are on your path. It's a lovely path. And what you're sharing with us is priceless. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to put you in the green room. Say so long for now, and I'll be with you in just a second. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you so much. You, you are more than welcome. Thank you. <gasps> Listen, she is sharing information that is priceless. There is no price tag. And if you are really wanting to have the best of the best, then this is where you should go and align with her because she's everywhere. Even though we're here in Florida, you can connect with her all over the world. And we hope that you will. It's always good to be with you. If I haven't said it, I'll say it again. Put biz, B-I-Z in the comments and you will be delivered your booklet. In the meantime, I want you to remember this date and there's a link that you can go to to sign up for this workshop. It's going to be absolutely epic. And if you put biz in the comments, your booklet will be delivered to you. I want you to connect with Gina because the work that she's doing is really fantastic in every way. And you can see that she lights up in her heart. Her soul is in this work. And that's a beautiful thing. And you don't find that often. And when you do, make sure you connect with people like this. You know, it's always good to be with you. I always enjoy your company. It's always good to share information and leading leaders with you because that's what we're all about. Bottom line is business, but it's all about you. So be well, take care. I think most of us are away from wearing the mask. Those who are still wearing it, be safe, stay safe, be well, and always look after you first so that you can look after others. I say so long for now. See you like next week, but maybe tomorrow. Good night. So long for now. Cheers. <laughs>